Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Siwi MK15 Digital Long Range Radio System. In this video I'm going to go over its features and specs and guide you through the available accessories and on upcoming videos I'm going to go over the basic setup procedure, show you some flight footage and perform a range test. First of all, the Siwi MK15 is based on a few components which some of them are bundled together and some are available separately. The two main components which I'm going to start with are the mini handheld ground station which is going to enable you to display the video feed and control your drone and the air unit which is going to be mounted on your drone and connected to an FPV camera and to a supported flight controller. Let's start with the MK15 mobile ground station. This handheld device features a built-in Android system that is running a custom Android 9 based ROM. It features a very bright and high quality 5.5 inch 1080p LCD screen, a built-in 10200 mAh lithium ion battery that should last for about 15 hours of continuous use. Its gimbals are using M4 stick ends, they are self-centering and feature a protection as this device has an IP58 rating so it is dust proof and water resistant. It supports up to 16 channels, which 13 of them are physical. So on the top right and left of the device, you can find two self-centering dials, two three position switches, and on its front side, in addition to the four channels of the gimbals, you can find two two position switches, two momentary switches, and another three position switch. Its two antennas, which are located on the top of the device, are using RPSMA antenna connectors. On the bottom of the device, you can find two speakers, a tripod mount, a micro SD card slot, a SIM card slot, a data port connector that is used for upgrading the firmware of the MK15 ground station, and a USB Type-C connector, which is used for charging the battery. The device supports fast charging, and it should take about 3 hours to fully charge a depleted battery. On the top side of the device, you can find a USB port that is used for connecting external accessories, another data port, and a full HDMI port that is used for connecting the MK15 to an external screen. Finally, as you can probably expect, this device is not very light and it weighs about 868 grams. Moving on to the MK15 Air Unit. It's using an XT60 battery connector. Its walking voltage is between 25.2 to 58.8 volts, so you can directly power it using between 6S to 14S batteries. It's using two 5dBi antennas, which are connected to the Air Unit using 29cm long RPSMA antenna connectors. The Air Unit is equipped with a built-in fan in order to keep it cool. On the unit itself, you can find three LED indicators, the bind button, a USB Type-C port, which is used for updating the firmware of the L unit, a video port for connecting a camera or a hub that enables you to connect two cameras simultaneously, a PWM port that supports up to five channels, a data port for telemetry data, and an SBUS port that supports up to 16 channels. As for its weight, on its own the air unit weighs about 100 grams and including the PMU and the antennas, its total weight is 149 grams. As for the other accessories, the MK15 system comes inside a carrying case which will enable you to store the radio controller along with other accessories and you should note that the retail version is going to include a high quality carrying case which is better than the one that was shipped with my sample unit. In addition, the basic package includes a USB Type-C to USB Type-C cable and a 20 watts quick charger that will enable you to fully charge the radio controller in about 3 hours, a USB to USB Type-C adapter, the needed harnesses for connecting the air unit to a flight controller, and a USB to 4 pins data connector that will enable you to update the firmware of the radio controller using Siwi's dedicated software which is currently only available for Windows. You should note that the MK15 system is available in different bundles. 
The basic package includes the radio controller, the radio receiver, and an HD camera that features pretty powerful LED searchlights, and the optional accessories are directional antennas for the radio controller, which according to Siwi will enable you to achieve a maximum range of 15 kilometers, another HD camera, a hub that will enable you to use two cameras simultaneously, and an HDMI converter, which will enable you to use any camera that has an HDMI output port. Here is a quick demo of the MK15 system. On the Android device, along with Cube Run Control and other pre-installed apps, you've got two apps by Siwi, one for setting up the radio controller, so over here you'll be able to bind the radio receiver with the radio controller, set the channels, and etc. The second app is dedicated for viewing the FPV feed, and as you can see right now, I've got the two HD cameras connected via the camera hub to the air unit, and using this app, you'll be able to monitor the video feed from each camera. By pressing the smaller screen, you'll be able to switch between the FPV feeds, and by dragging it, you'll be able to resize the smaller window. Now I'm pretty sure that by now, you're already curious about the picture quality and latency of the MK15 system. First of all, the latency is about 180 milliseconds, so it's not crazy high, but still, of course, not suitable for FPV racing. And as for picture quality, currently the system is limited to 720p 30 frames per second when using one of these HD cameras, and 720p 50 frames per second when using the HDMI adapter. So 1080p 60 frames per second or even 30 frames per second is not currently supported, and hopefully it's going to be added in the near future. In addition, the Siwi MK15 system operates on 5.8 GHz frequency and the maximum output power of the air unit is 500 mW and soon a 2.4 GHz version should be available as well. Overall, the Siwi MK15 system sports up some really interesting features, including a very impressive radio controller, and as it comes with a relatively low price tag, it offers a budget-friendly solution for semi-commercial and commercial use. Anyway, that's going to be it for my hands-on review of the Siwi MK15 system, and of course this video is not complete, so more detailed videos are going to be up soon. I would love to hear your thoughts about this system, so in case you have any comments or suggestions, please let me know in the comments section down below, and I'll do my best to address these issues in the upcoming videos. I wish you all happy flying, and I'll see you soon on my next videos. Goodbye.